understanding trees so in this brief video we will see more about the phylogenetic trees the the types of trees like dendrogram phylogram you know cladogram or time tree so what are the different types and what is rooting the tree and how what are the the, the various forms of rooting versus unrooted trees you know and also the nevic representation and uh, uh, various tree related terms like leaf you know and edge of the tree or uh, you know the the node a uh, lot of things you know hypothetical uh, taxonomic unit or uh, you know operational taxonomic unit and also monophyly paraphyly and polyphyly all these things uh, we will see in this brief video so as we know that uh, the phylogenetic tree predates darwin but probably the most famous tree is this tree, the illustration from the darwin's notebook i think illustration very famous I saw this, uh, the original of this illustration way back in 2009 in uh, London's famous Natural History Museum. You know, they had a, a, a 150th anniversary special exhibition of the Darwin's, uh, you know, uh, notebooks and his collections. So in this diagram, you can see that this is kind of a rooted tree, though Darwin didn't explicitly stated it. Number one seems to be the rooted tree. So if you read it carefully, that what he says is that B and C are a lot more related than either with A. So you can see that, uh, you know, the, the of course, the, uh, one of the major uh, problem with the tree-like illustration is that, that the evolution is not always tree-like, you know, uh, sometimes it is reticulate. You know, that is the problem with the tree-like illustration. Reticulate means because of the horizontal gene transfer that is not being considered at all. And this tree-like illustration also uh, from uh, the earlier incorrect assumption that the evolution is ladder-like, you know, from lower form to higher form. Now we know it is not the case. So even with all these uh, uh, problems with the, the phylogenetic tree, it's still very popular way of representing the evolution, you know, the tree, uh, phylogenetic tree. So, uh, and you should also know that the phylogenetic tree, whatever the tree, whichever the, the method which you use are all hypotheses. Uh, nothing is certain. So as you know, in science, we deal with probabilities, right? So high probability means it is highly likely. So these trees, uh, also have got probability values. So if you are putting in a Bayesian inference tree, then usually it has got something called BP values, Bayesian prior probability, PP, prior uh, or pro posterior probability values or in the Bayesian uh, representation. Or if you are using maximum likelihood trees or maximum parsimony trees, well, by the way, these are all different ways, the statistical ways of constructing the trees. Maximum likelihood, maximum parsimony, and base inference. So MP or ML, that is parsimony or likelihood, uh, you are likely to see, uh, you know, bootstrap proportion. That is also a way to say the probability of the tree to be uh, true, you know. So all these are hypotheses. You should, uh, you know, take it in consideration. Nothing is certain, right? We are just guessing out. These are all guesswork. But, uh, you know, we are, uh, what we are trying to do is to see how the nature respond the legacy of the evolution right so evolutionary legacy is what is being captured by the sense of this phylogenetic tree so uh, there are ma many ways of right you know drawing this or illustrating these trees uh, one form is known as dendrogram or phenogram by the way these terms uh, uh, there is no hard and uh, fast uh, definitions of this sometimes it is interchangeable as well you know so dendrogram or phenogram uh, the term usually means that only branching order makes sense, like how the trees are being branched. So, uh, you know, uh, but, uh, and you, of course, it's usually perpendicular. Only order makes sense. That means that the branch length are usually meaningless in dendrogram or phenogram. So perpendicular means uh, 90 degree angle or angles are 90 degree in the tree, you know. So that is how the dendrogram looks like. Uh, usually the you know genealogy family genealogy also you can portray like your great grandfather who who were uh, his uh, and uh, grandmother's kids and then separating you know all of the family tree is also a genealogical tree so a kind of a dendrogram you know and if you draw the same thing with angles like uh, you know as you can see in my the finger this kind of angle it's usually called cladogram you know again like dendrogram only branching order makes sense usually it's angular and phylogram is branch length drawn proportional to the substitution rate so usually it is perpendicular and branch length also makes sense 
so longer branch length means that branch or the leaf leading to that branch is very different from the rest so so many mutations or uh, nucleotide substitutions have converged on that branch that is what uh, the phylogram is all about the branch length makes sense in the case of phylogram now coming to chronogram chronogram is time tree that means time calibrated tree so one axis is the time it could be geologic periods or epochs too no all these are time right so the time tree means that you know each node or wherever whichever the point in the tree you can uh, you can draw a perpendicular to the time axis to see exactly when this event happened so it makes assumptions like molecular clock hypothesis that uh, you know rate of accumulation on one branch is constant right so dna sequences usually it's uh, all these trees are drawn with dna sequences of course morphology is also possible so dna sequences accumulate mutations at constant rates so that kind of molecular clock hypothesis you can make use of to draw the so called time tree but uh, to draw the real time tree you really need something called calibration checkpoints so those are dated fossils you know you can date the fossils with various uh, you know the uh, dating approaches right uh, radiometric dating different kinds of uh, radioactive isotopes you can see the ratio to see exact date of that particular uh, fossil so if you have those kind of radiometrically calibrated fossil we can use it as a checkpoint in the tree to go for, to get something called chronogram you know so there is a the main difference or uh, two kinds of trees you know so one is called rooted tree and another is unrooted tree what is the difference so some trees make uh, an explicit assumption or inference about the common ancestor so if you make that kind of assumption uh, that is called rooted tree and while some other tree doesn't make any assumption you know and uh, there is no directionality that is called unrooted tree so the first tree type that is uh, the trees that makes explicit assumption about uh, where the root is or uh, which is a common ancestor is called rooted tree and has a single node designated as the root which is a common ancestor common ancestor of the entire tree is usually called as most recent common ancestor or mrca so if mrca is uh, explicitly located in a tree that is called rooted tree while if there is no such assumption that is called uh, unrooted tree so unrooted tree specifies only relationships between the nodes and says nothing about the direction of the evolution you know so in one sense unrooted trees uh, makes lesser assumptions than rooted tree you know so it's much more simpler so uh, based on uh, you know the oxham's razor unrooted tree is preferable you see but uh, well it's it might not be that very meaningful it doesn't convey so much of the meaning but uh, rooted tree can right so you can see that the rooted tree you can see an explicit root the most recent common ancestor of enter uh, clade is this right but in the case of unrooted tree doesn't make any sense i mean uh, it's not really clear that which is ancestor and which are the descendant you see the ancestor of the rest a b and d or is a is ancestor of b c and d not clear right so in this tree it's very clear a b had a common ancestor while c d had a common ancestor and this one is a root so that is called the rooted tree right so another example of the rooted tree uh which is a cladogram like representation here so you can see that this is more like angular uh not of phylogram but it's a cladogram so you can see that again uh you know the the time makes sense in the case of rooted tree we can say that uh we can uh, uh, we can say uh, something called relative time estimates that right? b c the common ancestor uh you know is uh, younger than the common ancestor of b c and d you know or b c and a so the common ancestor of a b c is right somewhere here while b and c is common ancestry is definitely younger so that kind of relative time estimate is possible if the tree is rooted while in the case of unrooted tree uh, such assumptions are not valid so you can see here uh, that uh, another example of the unrooted and rooted tree so on the top panel you can see it's unrooted tree and you can place a root uh, on a branch uh, to make it a rooted so if you look at here what are the branches human mouse fugu and drosophila so fugu by the way is uh, if you wonder what the fugu is you know fugu is basically you know i'll just come to in a short while fugu is basically a puffer fish 
very costly fish i was living in japan for five years it's one of the most expensive uh, the most expensive fish in the world is fugu and you might wonder uh, why, why it is so expensive it is poisonous you know so it can actually cause some kind of intoxication and even hallucinogenic effects so maybe that is one reason why it's so very expensive so fish being a vertebrate you know fugu is a vertebrate uh, and we know that all these are vertebrates mouse and human mammals fugu is a vertebrate so drosophila is an arthropod it's an insect so uh, you know we know that based on our understanding we can safely place root on this branch so that way you can make it a rooted tree you know so unrooted trees are also perfectly fine and some of the most popular trees are unrooted for example this tree is an unrooted you know circular representation of various uh, eukaryotes based on you can see the unrooted tree based on myosin uh, super family you know the protein myosin family you can make this kind of tree so unrooted or rooted both are popular but the main difference is here is that unrooted doesn't make an explicit reference on the root or directionality of the evolution you know so uh, roots can usually be assigned to unrooted trees using an outgrowth so that is the most common way to assign the root is by an, an outgrowth so in group and outgrowth outgrowth is an external not the part of the in group you know so if if you are saying about the angiosperms then gymnosperm could be an outgrowth right so something obvious outsider is the outgrowth so if you uh, you know if while constructing the tree you um, add one outgrowth you know deliberately you add uh, so that you know where to place the root you know so that way you can convert the unrooted tree to the rooted tree so species unambiguously separated from the earliest from the other being studied that is called the the outgrowth you know for example baboons in the case of humans and gorillas so you should know that the outgroup should be really carefully chosen uh, which is not too distant and too similar so if it's really too distant it can cause various problems with the topology of the in group you know it can severely constrain the topology so it's not good especially if you're using parsimonious maximum parsimony for the tree making so it should not be too uh, you know too similar as well so uh, for example if you're making an angiosperm that is a flowering plants uh, you know if you are using an algae as an outgrowth that is too distant you know so if you are using a, a, a anita grade as an out, uh, outgrowth again that is uh, you know too similar so you need a balance maybe a gymnosperm or a ginkgo could be a good uh, option for making a uh, you know uh, angiosperm uh, grade uh, the phylogenetic tree so it should not be too distant it should not be too similar also you know you just need a, a fine balance while choosing an outgrowth and outgroup as the name says it's a group so it can be more than one uh, operational taxonomic unit otu as well that means it could be just one species or more than one species so if you use more than one species outgroup is a clade you see and for the three species there are three possible rooted trees but only one possible unrooted tree so uh, you can calculate this how many uh, rooted tree and unrooted tree so usually rooted trees are a lot more you know possibilities or uh, combinations are much more possible uh, you know by rooting the tree unrooted tree so it all depends where you place the root right this is only one unrooted tree you can place this unrooted tree in various uh, you know branches uh, to 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 root it so it depends on where you place and it, it also depends on the twisting of the branch so unrooted trees are much lesser than rooted trees so rooted trees are a lot more similar so this is that i was telling you about this is fugu so puffer fish you know uh, very expensive and uh, yeah i mean you need license to cut this fish you know in japan not everybody not all uh, you know hot layers the restaurant owners can cut it you need some special permission so the gland here so this toxic gland needs to be the poisonous gland needs to be removed you know and then seemingly a delicacy i never tried it uh, you know yeah uh, that is called the puff of fish very expensive so rooted tree and unrooted tree you can actually do that with the simple formula of the combination you remember the combination permutation permutation is ordered combination so combination where order doesn't make any sense so that is called combination uh, you know it's basically 
uh, combination is actually you know uh, uh, what is that the, the formula right uh, it's based all about the factorial 2n minus 3 factorial divided by n minus 2 factorial multiplied by 2 to the power n minus 2 so this is how to calculate the rooted tree number of rooted tree and number of unrooted trees you know so n factorial divided by n minus r factorial into r factorial right that is the the, the generic formula of the combination so if you apply this combination you can see that if you have only two uh, taxa that is two uh, species rooted and unrooted are just one each but if it's three then you can see that unrooted is only one possibility you know three species how can you actually place it whatever way you place it is all same at the same time rooted tree can be three depends on where you place the root you know and if you have four look at that only three possible unrooted tree but 15 possible rooted tree so if you have only 20 OTO 20 is not a big number 20 species now look at how many unrooted trees are possible and how much more rooted trees are possible so that is why phylogenetic inference seemingly simple or computationally expensive especially if you are using base inference you know so you really need a lot of computational power to to do the optimum tree which tree is uh, the perfect so for example if you use 20 species this many number of trees are possible so you have to evaluate each of these trees and you have to check the prob uh, you know pp values uh, positive probability values or a bootstrap proportions if you are doing the maximum likelihood uh, maximum parsimony to select one tree you know so of course you have to assess it uh, that doesn't mean that you have to uh, do that by looking all these trees you have to individually check now the, the software will do that for you that is the power of the computational heuristics right so uh, several heuristic algorithms like uh, monte carlo simulation you no know, uh, mcmc method can be used to select uh, the most optimum tree out of this many trees you know so those are part of the phylogenetic inference i will I'll introduce soft uh, you know shortly so rooting the trees i told you one easiest way is that you can assign the out group uh, you know deliberately adding a, 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 a taxa which is not part of your in group right that is called out group method of rooting the tree so another method is midpoint rooting midpoint rooting is branch length uh, wherever whichever the branch that has the longest length so then you are putting a, a dot or, or you are rooting uh, in that particular branch right in the midpoint from the rest of the taxon right so branch length measures the amount of difference that occurred along the branch so that is why if you are drawing the tree proportional to the uh, branch length is drawn proportional to the uh, accumulated differences that is substitutions then uh, the, the longest branch length is the most different, isn't it? That particular, uh, you know, species is different from the rest. So you, there is no problem. You can just place uh, the root on that particular branch. And assumes the species are evolving in a clock-like manner. You know, that is molecular clock hypothesis, right? So that is how you, you, you have to draw this kind of, uh, uh, you know, phylogram. And the third method is a gene duplication routing places root between paralogous genes. Uh, remember paralogous genes are the genes separated by speciation events uh, I mean orthologous one is separated by speciation events while paralogous one is separated by gene duplication events so basically these are homologous genes separated by gene duplication events are known as paralogous genes one example would be alpha and beta chains of uh, globin gene family you know so the first one is the outgroup you are placing uh, uh, with deliberately added taxa, for example, in this tree, uh, you know, drosophila is deliberately added as an outgroup. So that kind of routing is known as outgroup routing. Second one is midpoint routing. You can see that this is a phylogram because it's drawn in proportion to, you know, branch length makes sense here. So whichever branch length, which is the longest one, you're placing the root on that branch and especially in the midpoint from the rest. You know this and this so the midpoint you're placing a root that is called the midpoint routing mm -hmm. the third one is gene duplication uh, you're deliberately putting the root in uh, you know where the uh, this the genes have been uh, you know the duplication happened here in this case alpha chain and beta chain yeah, you can uh, say for sure that the root has to be there so that is called gene duplication routing so more terminology uh, one terminology is known as nevic format nevic is basically nested parentheses so basically the 
the brackets you have to expand so this is how uh, the navic representation of the tree it's basically a phylogenetic tree so you can draw you can make a tree you can draw from this particular uh, parenthetical uh, notation so how do you draw it simple starts from the inside and then expand it so b and c should be joined together then d and e should be joined together because this forms a branch right so these are internal most uh, you know brackets so you draw it then comes a second level of the bracket this and this are the second level of the bracket so this uh, branch of b and c should join with a branch leading to d and e then comes a final you know then a will come in so that way you can actually draw a tree right so that is known as navic uh, representation so this kind of nested parenthetic is used if you ever used excel uh, for excel formula for example this is same representation the logical formula for microsoft excel or whatever that spreadsheet algorithm that you use for example google sheets you know so it's the same way you can actually use it right so if we lack the data to tell which order or to you know then uh, it, it it's it won't be a, a bifurcating but instead it will become multifurcating that means from one node multiple branches will come that means uh, it's not certain you know so if it is only two is coming from each branch that is known as bifurcating the binary representation while from one node if there are multiple branches coming that is known as uh, you know multifurcating more than two ancestors right so that is called so if it's only two so that kind of tree is known as resolved tree the, the term resolved means that or fully resolved means each node has got only two uh, descendant branches you know so it's splitting only two so that way it is known as resolved you know for example you can he see here uh, from this node it's only two are coming right so that kind of node is known as bifurcating node binary representation so or other way to think is that from one node there will be three branches one two and three so that kind of uh, uh, thing is known as bifurcating node at the same time this node you see there are at least uh, you know six Right, there are six descendants from this node, so that is not a bifurcate, that is polytomy or multifurcating node. So, usually, multifurcating node represent data is insufficient, it is not resolved. So, in a fully resolved phylogram, you can see only this kind of bifurcating nodes, you know. So, that is what. So, by the way, what is this node? Node represents a speciation event. So this is ancestral population. So you know if it's drawing in proportion to the time, if the time axis is like this left side, then the ancestral population split into two, uh, you know, daughter population. So that is basically a speciation event, right? So that is what the node represent, right? So you can see that in this the earlier tree, root means the most recent common ancestor of the entire tree is known as root mrca right and there are internal node right the node represents the speciation even i told you from this population it is splitting into two populations so that is called the internal node or just node edge edge is basically the branch or edge right so these are nothing but population these are evolving of course a species or any kind of population is dynamic nothing is static right we are also evolving uh, like coronavirus is evolving many people are making a big deal of this uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 is evolving yeah I mean why not it's also a living organism right uh, viruses are half living and half dead but uh, we people are you know we are actually fully alive right at least as far as you're alive right so yeah uh, that is what this uh, you know this edge represent population these are dynamic populations you know Yes, so topology, the term topology means branching pattern of the tree, how the tree branches out. So topology, the term is basically uh, came from, uh, you know, the mathematics topology, like, uh, you know, ellipse is a top, basic topological form of a circle, right? So, uh, of course, these all these things can be modeled into the uh, complex, uh, you know, the uh, equations. I don't want to go deep in it. I well, I also don't know much about this topology. Uh, a branch of the mathematics is way too complicated to decipher. Only a little bit I know, and yeah. 
Topology is also different from topography. That's also a related term. Topography is like surface topography, you know, if you do a, a bathymetry in uh, oceanography, uh, you know, so the surface pattern in, in geography also, you might so know the topo topographical map of India, you know, where the, uh, you know, uh, the mountains are in, right? That is called topography. Topography of Terror is one of my favorite museums that is in Berlin. You know, so the Holocaust Museum, Topography of Terror. I've written about it in Hindu. Check it out, my article as well. So this is topology. Topology means branching pattern of the tree. So which two uh, leaves are more related? I can easily say that C and D are a lot more related than either with B or A. B and C are related than either with A. Because B and C are both actually descended from one common ancestor in one sense, right? So that is what called topology, right? So, uh, and yes, root is common ancestor of organism in the phylogeny. That is most recent common ancestor is uh, also known as uh, MRCA, right? And if you're drawing the tree of life, the entire uh, biodiversity of the planet Earth, then that MRCA is known as LUCA, LUCA, that is last universal common ancestor, you know? So the first living organism on the planet Earth from where we all can trace our great 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 grandmother had been that bacteria isn't it so that is called luca otherwise if you are looking at individual tree it is known as mrca most recent common ancestor you know uh, for example if, if these are all angiosperm this is the oldest angiosperm most recent common ancestor uh, mrca you can never say that uh, you know bacteria is the mrca you no know, bacteria is also a common ancestor but that is not most recent see that is a difference right here in this tree you can see that mrca is the the root of this tree okay and uh, another one is the internal branch so the branch i told you it's an evolving population that is what the branch is all about common ancestor of a subset of species in a tree for example c and d it's a subset the common ancestor is this internal branch you know and leaf is a terminal uh, uh, you know the uh, terminus of the tree is called the, the leaf also known as OTU, that is Operational Taxonomic Unit. Usually it is species, if you are putting in a species tree. It could be genes too, you know. Uh, I mean gene tree, uh, even in gene tree, OTU is usually species. Or it could be higher taxonomic levels too, like family or order or even class, you know. So OTU means Operational Taxonomic Unit and these are extend. Extend means you can see it today. Extinct means, uh, you know, it's, it's no more on the planet earth for example here this is also a terminal branch but this one is extinct right this is extent extent means living this is gone so in strict sense this is not an otu this is a hypothetical taxonomic unit you know so htu means extinct and especially these internal nodes are htu we have no proof right? we may have the fossil proof but still uh, you cannot say that this is that, right? Unless you have uh, DNA from soft fossil like mammothy, of course, uh, we have we have got proof for that. But if it's the, if there is no soft fossil, if it's hard fossil, then the chances are high that it's only a hypothesis, you know? So the nod is the point of divergence of the two operational taxonomic units. So these are known as nod, while this is uh, internal nod, right? So basically nod means speciation events. Right from this ancestral population, it, it diverged into two daughter populations. So that means usually this nod uh, uh, by the speciation events. So most common form of speciation is allopatric speciation, you know, because of the vicariance, right, the geographical barrier, right. And uh, clade means group of species descended from one common ancestor. For example, from this common ancestor, the entire descendants. Uh, you know, diverged, right, or later uh, resulted in, came into existence on the planet Earth. So that is called the clade, right? So if you imagine that all these, this uh, topology of the phylogeny tree is made up of, uh, uh, you know, uh, wire. So the clade, you can cut it with just one cut. You know, just if you cut it here, the entire clade will be gone, right? So that kind of clade, uh, it's also known as monophyly or monophyletic clade or cluster. All these terms you can use it interchangeably. All these are synonyms. So these are group of OTUs that share the same branch. That means all these have got the same common ancestor, not shared with any other 
uh, you know groups of this phylogenetic tree now this is known as paraphyletic group paraphyletic group means it is a group of OTU that do not form a cluster without including additional OTU uh, in this case a b and c together do not form a clade it's not a cluster unless you add d also in it so if you add d in it yeah it becomes a cluster so if you're defining some groups based on exclusion criterion that is known as paraphyletic group so usually paraphyletic groups are not natural you know you are simply naming it artificial so one purpose of the entire phylogenetic inference is to know the nature of course that is what the science also is right science is about objective truth right we just are trying to see how nature works right if you believe in god how the god if the god had a plan how the plan is right that is what this uh, you know this uh, science is all about yes that is exactly what the phylogeny phylogenetic inference is all about right uh, to to approximate how the nature works right so this kind of paraphyletic group uh, you know so in traditional taxonomy we use that a lot of paraphyletic group these are not natural one good example would be uh, you know reptilia you might have studied in your school you know one group of uh, animal reptiles which is artificial group it's not natural you know so you know reptiles you're you're defining based on the common ancestor plus some of the descendants not all the descendants because you are defining this group based on exclusion criteria the entire group minus apes and mammals so if you really want to say this is a reptile if you include everything together to define this group then we are also a reptile and birds are also reptile but usually birds are excluded and human beings and other mammals are also excluded right so that is why this is known as paraphyletic clade and paraphyletic clade remember the common ancestry is also involved right and some of the descendants are involved but uh, some are excluded right that is called paraphyly and now the finally there is uh, another kind of group known as polyphyly what is that so these are the group of otu from different clades and the mrca is not the member of either of this group in earlier example mrca is uh, the member of that group right let us go back one slide you can see that most recent common ancestor amniota is also part of reptilia right that is why it's called paraphyletic clade but in the case of polyphyletic clade the mrca is this most recent common as or the root of the tree is not part of either of these two groups right so these two groups are really unrelated completely different but maybe that show, share some kind of uh, external morphology uh, one example would be you know mosquitoes uh, mosquitoes have got wings you know and uh, a parrot also have got wings so can you define these two together to have one group uh, you know uh, and you name it as winged creatures <laughs> you know that is incorrect right uh, strictly speaking the wings of mosquito is not really a wing per se it is an appendage right it's a locomotor appendage of the insect it's it's a uh, it's an insect right arthropod right uh, at the same time uh, the birds are so opposite isn't it so yeah these two are completely unrelated and you're grouping together uh, based on your in uh, you know misunderstanding so that is the reason most of this traditional taxonomy uh, traditional uh, systematics is flawed uh, because they actually uh, you know group uh, similar looking organisms together but deep uh, in 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 their anatomy if you look or the functionality uh, these are not related you know so that is called polyphyletic group in this uh, picture you can see that these are all different kinds of uh, monkey as you know monkey itself the term is ambiguous right so uh, i mean if you look at that uh, you know uh, the different kinds of apes and other kinds of primates you can see that lorises and tarsiers tarsiers are really beautiful if you you can just google it philippines is uh, uh, you know is where the tarsiers are in you can see it so beautiful you can you can uh, have the monkey in your arm you know it's it's like our palm size beautiful creature the tarsier so lorises and tarsier if you group together because both are very small in size and uh, that is a classic example of polyphyly because neither of the common ancestor of these two groups are part of this group 
common ancestor of Lorisus and Tarsier is somewhere here, which is not part of this red group, right? So that is called polyphyly. Now here the blue group, if you look, it's paraphyly. Uh, the common ancestor is there. Some of the descendants is there, Limmer, Lorisus and Tarsier is there. But you're excluding all this uh, new world and old world monkeys and uh, uh, apes and humans are all excluded. So if you define a group based on exclusion criterion, that is known as paraphyly. And monophyly is this. Uh, this is natural group. No, no doubt about it because the entire clade, you can cut it with just one cut. Right? You can isolate that, that clade. So that is actually a cluster. Most recent common ancestor with all its descendants. That is natural group and that is monophyly. So in phylogenetic systematics, only this kind of natural groups are named, you know. So that is the beauty of this phylogenetic systematics and that is what it sets apart from uh, other, uh, you know, traditional systematics which is not based on the monophyly. Only monophyletic clades are named in phylogenetic systematics, you know. So that is how uh, uh, various forms of interpreting the tree comes in. And uh, in this uh, particular uh, short video, I've covered many things like dendrogram, cladogram, phylogram, and chronogram. You might know the difference. And also the rooted versus unrooted tree. What is the main difference between these two kinds of tree representation, you know? And also how to root the tree, midpoint rooting and outgroup rooting and paralogous rooting or gene duplication rooting are the three most common ways to root the tree. And also how to represent the tree by Nevik. Uh, Nevik is the, uh, you know, it's basically the parenthetical uh, way, nested representation, just like the, the formulas of the Excel. And also various terms with the tree like leaf, edge, node, uh, hypothetical taxonomic unit, uh, you know, operational taxonomic unit, uh, most recent common ancestor, last universal common ancestor, Luca, right? And also various kinds of groups like monophyly, paraphyly and polyphyly. So keep tuned and stay, uh, watch uh, the rest, rest of the videos in this series of this phylogeny.